Hi, welcome to today's Piece of Peace. I have a lot to cover today, yet again. It is a very um, different world that we live in. and um, But the one thing that is the same is our God. He hasn't changed. He's not different. So I come back to that one true solid on a daily basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment, moment basis. I think when we started this, when COVID started, it was really about honing in to God um, in a time that was very uncertain. God is always certain and hasn't changed, even though our world, moment by moment, is changing. But back then, that's when God was saying, I need your attention focused on me moment to moment. Not just on Sunday when you go to church. That kind of got taken away for quite a while. Not just um, when you want to um, because he put us in a desperate need of him. So moment by moment he's calling us into uh, staying in his presence. So today is really going to be pointing on that. I talked a little bit about um, the, some of the scriptures that I'm going to be diving in during our service yesterday for those of you who were there. Um, there'll be a reference to one of the, um, the scriptures that I had referenced to yesterday as well. However, I wanted just to start with um, just my morning dialogue with him. And I was grateful for the power of worship yesterday. God is, I have had an incredibly heavy spirit this last week and trying to decipher what part of it is my emotions and what's going on with it to what are the current events and because I um, I'm an interceder I have sometimes this there's there's seasons of things that have happened in my life where I can feel the emotional impact of it like six months before everybody else feels that <laughs> so um, I'm I'm in I truly was journaling this morning like um, Lord, I don't know how much of this heaviness is emotions to what's emotional response to what's happening in our world, or but I feel like it's more than that. I feel like there. Um, I continue to pray um, for our country, for our situation, for our president, for um, what's happening. Um, but it it seems as though there's more than just an emotional response to it for me. I feel like I'm in an intercession right now, interceding for what's happening, feeling an impact of things prior to them happening. It's such a, um, it's it's grievous, and I, uh, my heart is um, really praying uh, for the Lord and what's to come, and let Him handle that. Um, and he, I was just making some some observations and and writing them out before the Lord, and he's just like, my grace is sufficient. Your observation is good. Um, trust me, you know. Stay observant and pray. Seek my presence daily, all throughout your day, moment by moment. I'm with you. I'm for you. I'm here, and do not fear is what he says. And I've been spending just an incredible amount of time in Deuteronomy. It's just such a strange thing. It's not, it's not a book that I typically hang out in, but have been. And um, he was bringing to my attention again that, um, I don't know how many of you guys have watched The Chosen yet, or if you've gotten to stream that first series of that. There's this one scene where Jesus is talking to the children, and they're talking about their daily life with him. And I can just envision us being those kids hanging out with him. And and one little boy was upset with his friend, so he pushed his friend down. And, and, and Jesus allowed them to dialogue about that. But then he brought them back to Deuteronomy, where he says, um, it is mine to avenge. And he had the children sort of qu quote that scripture. I will repay in due time. Their foot will slip. Their day of disaster is near. And their doom rushes upon them. I'm going to keep going here because this is where he talk, brought me this morning. We're in Deuteronomy um, 32, and we're in verse 36 now. The Lord will judge his people and have compassion on his servants. And when he sees their strength is gone and no one is left, slave or free, he will say, Now where 
are there now where are their gods small g the rock they took refuge in he comes back in 38 and says the god or who, the gods who ate the fat of their sacrifices drank the wine of their drink offerings and let them rise up and help you and let them give you shelter exclamation points exclamation points but then he comes back in 39 and says see now that i myself am he why are we putting our trust in anything else other than our king right now he says there is no god beside me i put to death and i will bring to life i've wounded and i will heal and no one can deliver out of my hand goes down to 43 he says rejoice o nations with his people for he will avenge the blood of his servants he will take vengeance on his enemies and make atonement for his land and his people so i hang on to that and then he brings me into today's devotion. I'm going to be taking it out of, um, we're going to be in three different books. We will first be, uh, we will be in Luke, Deuteronomy again, and 2 Corinthians. And I may start in 2 Corinthians. Let me see. Nope, I'm going to start in Luke. <laughs> okay. So we're in Luke, um, 12 and we're going to be reading 22 to 20 um 22 to 31 okay so i'll just start there it's entitled do not worry second corinthian no luke 12 22 through 31 then jesus said to his disciples therefore i tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you or about your body what you will wear life is more than food and the body more than clothes consider the ravens and they do not sow or reap they have no storerooms or barns yet god feeds them how much more valuable are you than birds who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life since you cannot do this very little thing why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grasses of the field, which are here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagans run after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom. Seek his kingdom. And all things will be given to you as well. And then I'm going to hop over to Deuteronomy, which um, we're going to be in Deuteronomy 31. There's just one verse that stood out with this devotion today is Deuteronomy 31 6 so he's telling us not to be worried focus on the kingdom be there every moment by moment knowing what his mindset is speaking only his spoken words I said earlier do not allow your fears or your anxiety to speak things into existence stop it speak only what his mindset is what his spoken words make declarations that are in line with the lordship of jesus make declarations of what, on earth as it is in heaven don't spend time giving power to your fear and your worry he's like stop all of that focus on me everything will be given to you he brings us into deuteronomy 31 and here's where he starts giving us a charge it says be strong and courageous do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You have a lot of power if you're created in his image. Your spoken word has a ton. He says, do not fear. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God, goes with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm going to jump over now to um, 2 Corinthians because he's given us sort of a battle cry here. A battle cry. How do we stand up with what's going on today? Focusing on God, um, not being doormats, uh, not burying our heads in the sand, but we have a very powerful voice because we are made in the image of God 
and because we're believers and his spirit lives inside of us. This is super important in this time. I'm going to take you into 2 Corinthians and we're going to be in 10. We're going to go 3 through 5. All right. He says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight are not the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Hear this again. <laughs> For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, your thought patterns, your spoken word, and your actions, your prayers have the power to demolish strongholds. Keep that in the forefront of what you choose to say. Keep that truth in the forefront of what you're going to choose to think about and what you're going to choose to say and what you're going to choose to put your hand to today. You have so much power as a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm going to read this whole thing again. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets, itself, set, that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. What is reeking of taking away God from everything right now? And this says, on the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. This is huge. Your mindset needs to be in agreement with God's. Your spoken word needs to be in agreement with reality on earth as it is in heaven. And that brings us into Jesus calling today. This is a huge charge for us as a as a believer as a kingdom of believers, you guys. This is a huge charge for us. What are we going to be thinking about in these days ahead? How are we going to bring our prayers, our spoken word, our mindset, our actions into agreement with God that they're going to take down strongholds because we're made in the image of the one who created us, who created the universe. This is big. He says to us here, um, I'm reading out of um, Sarah Young's book called Jesus Calling. Um, you can download that app. You can order this online. She writes from the perspective of God speaking to us. And all of those scriptures that I just read from were coming right out of this devotion. It says, God's perspective to us. Sit quietly with me. Letting all your fears and worries bubble up to the surface of your consciousness. There, in the light of my presence, the bubbles pop and disappear. However, some fears surface over and over again, especially fear of the future. You tend to project yourself mentally into the next day, week, months, year, decade, and you visualize yourself coping badly in these times. What you are seeing is a false image because it doesn't include me. Those gloomy times that you imagine will not come to pass since my presence will be with you at all times. When a future-oriented worry assails you, capture it and disarm it by um, sufficing the light of my, or suffusing the light of my presence into that mental image. Say to yourself, Jesus will be with me then and there. With his help, I can cope. Then, Come home to the present moment where you can enjoy peace in my presence. We have a lot of power. Made in the image of the Holy One of Israel. We have a lot of power. Made in the image of God. He spoke creation into existence. Our spoken words brings things into existence. Stop speaking worry. 
Stop speaking emotions and stop speaking fear. Come in line with God's reality. Stay in his presence so that you can be at peace. Don't go far from him. Be in his word. Be in prayer. Put worship music on all throughout your house. That dispels the enemy. You can't stand it. But know you are loved. Know he's with you and he's not leaving or forsaking you and he's going to take care of you. We're not fighting as men do of the world. We're fighting because we're using on earth as it is in heaven, the perspective of God, his mindset, his spoken word, his prayers, his action. And that's today's piece of peace. God bless you.